They took in a same way. <laughs> Our YouTube channel favorite favorite. Do we keep our favorites? Or?
Hello and welcome to OTB's broadcast of the Rugby Alumni Showdown. I want to apologize right off the bat about our lack of commentary and audio for the first portion of the game. We uh, didn't realize it wasn't working. <laughs> uh, we're in search for a commentator right now. In the meantime, you have me. I know nothing about rugby. Well, I know a little bit, but not enough to be useful. Right now, my best expert guess is that the game is paused, that they are in between rounds of some sort. It looks like they're taking a breather. They're you know, hugging each other a little bit, getting ready to do something, um, throwing a ball around. There's one guy that's laying down. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, looks like he's having a nice little nap there. An RC car has entered the field. I do not believe it is going to play, but it has rolled over. That is tragic. Uh, some of the parents came out today. We have semi-full stands. You may still be able to squeeze in if you come on down to Oregon Tech and go to the soccer field, which today is the rugby field. Looks like someone who might actually know about rugby may be joining us. How's that game going for you, Keegan? We're, we're joined by Keegan, last name, who is one of our star rugby players, and he's not on the alumni team, I don't think. How's that? How'd that game go? It's going good. Just having fun and trying to get a, oh, get it over on the on the dudes who have gotten themselves um, through four years of rugby. We love being here and love playing. Thank you so much. Hell yeah. Looks like the flag people are coming back onto the field to conduct all of the players in the orchestra that is rugby. Um. I just got promoted to a chair. Now I can sit down instead of just standing behind the rest of the production crew. Today's stream is a collaboration between the folks in Oregon Teth Ath Athletics and Oregon Tech Broadcasting. We're working together to bring this, hopefully, multi-cam broadcast to you today. Unfortunately, this is the very first time we have even turned all this stuff on at the same time, because we did not have time to do a dry run before this. But it's a learning experience. The next one will be better, and the one after that will be even better. Looks like the score is 10 to 19, owls up. Uh, I don't know if that carries over between games, I hope so. but yeah, it has so far. We've got a uh, crowd mic that is not working. It has It's a phantom power microphone that we have phantom power going to. We have all of the wind protections necessary. It is plugged into the same mixer that you can hear me through right now. But somehow, it's some way... It's not working. Yeah, if there are any audio experts watching the stream today, come on down to the Oregon Tech soccer field. We are located in the construction zone for Seaman Hall. It is undergoing a renovation after like Boyven Hall. Boyven Hall is undergoing a renovation. Uh, it was like, what was it, like a gazillion years old before it was? Close. Yeah. Oregon Tech founded in the f 1947. Moved here, 1960-something. 1964, my sources are telling me. Our newest building on campus is the Seat Hall. It's uh, it's right over there. Our camera will pan to, oh, it looks like, yeah, all right, the game's starting. I can stop talking about architecture now. It looks like the people on the left are going to kick it to the people on the right. Uh, Owls to alumni, number 10, uh, he's got the ball. He just is now on the ground. And they're gonna do something I think is called a, a, a rut something like that and that's how they get the ball out of that situation otherwise it stays locked up down there they're doing it again I know that uh, a very close family friend has explained all this to me before because she played rugby in college shout out to Maddie hopefully she's watching today 
uh, that was a that was kind of cool. That guy just flipped the other guy over. But the thing that they do there, that's to keep the ball from turning over. I think I don't know if it's called turning over in this, but that's the vocab I'm going to use. There's a lot of piling up and rolling around, as you can see. And uh, now the other team has, uh, now the owls, I think. Which color is which? Blue. Blue is owls, white is alumni. Uh, is that right? Because I definitely see some people who are freshmen wearing white. Either way. It, it looks like they didn't have enough alumni to play, so they gave some of the owls blue. Like All right. Keegan is definitely a current player. And Kevin Brown is white. Yeah. Okay. Kevin Brown is on the white team. This just in. White is alumni. Blue and gold is owls. We see number 12 trying to lend a hand there as he steps away from the rut. We should probably pull up like a... Ruck. That, I, I think Ruck is correct. You got it. Um, a rut is a divot in the ground. Let me pull up a uh, rugby cheat sheet here. Oh, my very first search for a rugby cheat sheet told me about steroids and Adderall. I don't think that is it. Okay. He's going, he's going. Wow. He is not going anymore. He was taken down by someone who was on the ground. They all have their hands up as if the police just rolled up. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. It looks like... Oh, scrum half. I know that's one of the people out there. I think that's in the back, though. Um, it looks... Huh? Yeah. It says the guy. It's the one. The one scrum half. I think this is the fly half, who they're about to throw into the air so he can try and intercept the ball. Um, they are... They they just put some big people in the air, man. He's calling to Ruck onto the field, and it turns out he did not hear him because he threw the ball. Oh, one thing I do know about rugby. You can only pass the ball sideways or backwards, never forward. You may remember the person who fell down earlier in the play. They are still on the ground. The reason the game has not stopped yet is because rugby is ruthless and they don't stop for anybody unless you were like like really like seriously injured. Even then, they rarely stop it. They are, did he just try to pants him? Now they're rucking. They're rucking and rucking again and then rucking and rucking. It looks like... They gave up on the human centipede ruck, and they are moving on to trying to grapple each other. All right, they're trying to oh. I believe we call that in the business a dog pile. Uh, the ball just went way far back towards the owls. And he's now, number 25, quickly regained all of that lost ground. He's rucking. Owls have possession as they move up the field. They're rucking again, getting the ball out. You see them kind of lining up there so they can pass along as they run it up the field. But instead, number 19 decided he really wanted to hold on to that other dude's hand as he pulled him to the ground. You see... Yeah. Our star player who gave an interview earlier, Keegan, um, you just witnessed him I, snail crawling on the ground. He's now on the alumni side as number 16. This game was initially described to me as a mix between soccer and football. And to me, it looks like a mix of two things that I don't know anything about because I'm not sure what's going on. Alex, I've also heard Keegan describe it as a game for uh, animals played by gentlemen. So mm. I, I thought it was like <laughs> describing it, but... You did not hear that 
our star player Keegan just mentioned or previously told our stream director that this is a game for animals played by gentlemen. And we can see that that is certainly one of the descriptions I have ever heard for it. Oh, somebody scored. Uh, the owls. The owls scored. It is now 24 to 10 with six minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the period. I'm not sure what the period is measuring. It could be quarters, it could be games, it could be halves. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Animals do not understand time, and it's certainly a game for them. You can see in the background, I think Upper Klamath Lake. It's looking blue this time of year. Gave it a few weeks, and it'll turn green with the algae that grows as the algal bloom takes place. I don't think that's called a field goal, and I don't think he earned the points for it, but that's the closest approximation I that I have. I oh, he did earn the points. It's now 26 to 10. That was certainly a thrilling series of events. We, we have no idea what the score is. Why does it look big and bloated? Yeah. Our scoreboard is slightly delayed from the on-field scoreboard because none of us know how this game works. We're doing our best to follow the action and to copy the scoreboard on the field, but it's uh, certainly a task for us. Everybody's lining up again. I believe the alumni are kicking to the Owls this time. You see Kevin Brown moseying on down towards the east side of the field, number 24. Kevin Brown is a communications professor here at Oregon Tech and the champion of the rugby team. He's been recruiting people and coaching at both sides for I don't know, probably a, a bazillion years. I don't know how long he's been here or how old he is. I just know that the answer to both of those is a large number. We have number four, Cole something. Uh, I... He was in my group for New Wings, which is a new student event. Or not New Wings, but uh, SOAR. He did good there, I think. The That looks like an unsuccessful ruck, which I do believe is known as a... Give me a second here. As a mall when someone tries to ruck, but they cannot come through. Ball is turned over. It's now in possession of the Owls again as they pass it down the field. Yeah, the alumni are deteriorating, and I think that's because they are all old people. Number 19 is really bringing it today. He's leaving it all out on the field. Kevin Brown, in possession of the ball, passes to number 13, who gets crossed up, it looks like, but gets it back to the other guy who... Wow, he made it a couple steps with all those dudes on his back. That's crazy. Number seven, it looks like. Number 23 does make it. He scored, I think. Yes, the score siren whistle thing just sounded. Um, the yellow man's holding up the ball. He just gave it to number seven. 26 to 15. The alumni have scored five points. So is a regular score then five points and the field goals two? Is that what we think? Well, then how did they get to 26? Did they score four and then get three field goals? Oh, so it's like a... Uh, like in basketball, like if you're right up there, it's one point, but there's also like the three-pointer line and all that. Yeah, that's a bad analogy for me to use because I don't know anything about basketball either. Our star player, Keegan, is back to the outs. I do not actually know if he is uh, any good or any bad, but he is the only person who came up here and talked about commentating and answered questions. 
it looks like our other star player from who starred on the alumni team today, Dylan Yoshinaga, is about to join us. I hope he remembers that he needs to come up here. I do believe he was taken out of the game for a concussion, so I would not fault him if he forgot who we are. Let's hope he didn't forget how the game went. All right, he is. It looks like he is headed this way. <laughs> yes, Dylan, we are filming, and we are live. If you'd like to grab a mic and start commentating with me, hopefully it'll get a lot better because I have been talking out of my ass this entire time. There you go. Yeah, this is broadcasting now on the Oregon Tech Broadcasting YouTube channel. Under Hello, everyone. My name is Dylan. You guys are with my mouth. Continue. All right. Hello, everyone. Take two. My name is Dylan, and... Uh, I am the concussed, so today we are we're gonna do some commentating, huh? All right. What are we looking at now? It looks like the owls are kicking so to the like alumni. Nicholas has just kicked off. Here we go. Cole is running up there, number four. Oh man, and he's just getting away. Somebody stop this guy. Man, he is showing off. He's going too. all the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be what, like 50 yards right there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In the game of rugby, how critical is each yard? Yeah, I guess, yeah, pretty critical, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even an expert. I'm kind of bad this, at rugby. So this is it. a ruck that we just saw? Yep. To Quinn, who's number five today. Yes. Oh, that was a nice and offload to Kevin Brown, and he... Kevin Brown. It's still going. The flag people have said that it is time to stop. And now there is an argument on the field. Kevin Brown is getting scolded for throwing the ball. I don't know what else you do in that situation, but apparently it's anything other than that. What should Kevin have done in this situation? Yeah, he should have hold, held on to it and went down with the ball. Would that have been a situation he could have turned into a ruck? Yeah, I mean, there's a few people behind him, so he could have um, he could have had some support there, but. If you were Kevin Brown, and I mean, a gigantic sack of old bones, would you have gone down to the ground, or would you have passed it out like he did? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I probably would have just threw it away too. Oh. I mean, this game isn't really that important. It's just for fun, you know. But just for fun games. That's right. Kevin's also like 50-something, I think. Kevin's in his 50s, and he's still playing? <laughs> actually, I think, he's, I think he's in his 60s. I think he's <laughs> that's all, I think that's he actually crazy. Yeah, I think he mentioned that he's about to hit retirement here pretty <laughs> soon, collect his Medicare and stuff. So, What do you think will happen to the rugby team when Kevin Brown retires? Well, I think um, based on the news that I got, they're going to – school's going to start supporting rugby as an actual sport rather than just an intramural so um, it looks like they might try to get a coach and then eventually down the road try to get a fem uh, women's team well one thing's for certain it's that Oregon Tech Broadcasting is going to do everything we can to support rugby via live streaming and well whatever else we're capable of that's right everything except for joining the team because all of us are I wouldn't describe any of us as athletes would you no, I'm, yeah, I'm definitely not an athlete. <laughs> Brian might be good. He's like a bazillion feet tall. I think that's good for the fly halves, right? I should have brought that sheet that you gave me with all everything written down. That oh, would have been yeah, really helpful. Yeah. Nah, he'd be a good forward, honestly, yeah. He's, uh, that'd be where you'd want him.
please excuse us just one second. We are getting a camera that we had stationary up here turned around so you can see Dylan and I and Orion in the captain's chair here. It is not the greatest shot in the world because I did not realize that these cameras output without a LUT. We'll have to figure out how to fix that in the future. It's so quite, quite is dark, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, quite dark and quite grayscale yeah. and quite out of focus for now. But you can't see that. What you see is the field as the alumni are lining up. It looks like sides have changed. And all right, now it looks like the alumni are about to kick off. Scotty, number 19, with the ball. Is he pretty much the only one in this uh, game plan wearing a scrum cap? Is that Ethan Weaver? Uh, honest, I think he's from like Albany. Yeah. And it looks like, uh, yep, Eric's got the ball and he's just running around with it. Somebody better get there and support him. And they lost him. And they got it back. So that scrum cap is a hat, not just his hair. So I thought that was weird, but... Yeah, so the scrum cap is actually... Normally forwards wear it, so when they're actually in the scrum, it protects, like, their ears. They don't get, like... I'm pretty sure that's what it's for, so they don't get, like, cauliflower ear or something. What position do you usually play? Well, I uh, I played scrum half before, uh, you know, before I got knocked in the head, so... <laughs> before the devastating blow to the old thinker. Yeah, so now I'm just standing here in a white T-shirt... Here comes the line out. Looks like they lifted that guy up just a there little bit. There we go. Too there late. we go. Getman's got it. He passes it off to Corbin, and it passes it off to Eric. Eric. Eric's going. Somebody get there and support the man. Gets through. There we go. Looks and they like ruck there. Ryan, our new scrum half number nine, does a great job. Gets it to the forwards, and there goes Getman. He's, He's running for it. He's running for through. it. And there comes Zach right on his heels. That All guy right, is looking good. And to another forward pod. Take the ball. It's looking good. Ooh, they always get them on that. This is the alumni game now. So. So and so now what happened is there's a penalty, so they have to get back 10 yards. And they're going to choose to kick it and take the line out. Oh, never mind. Just kidding. It's still in. There we go. And Keegan finally caught one. So was that a strategic move from the alumni to block the ruck so they would get called for not releasing? Uh, yeah, actually, I think that would be a strategic move. I don't think you're really supposed to do that, but... All right, and some big guy that I don't know his name. And he gives Scotty the ball. He is big. Oh, there's Scotty. Honestly, you probably should just gave me a mic that doesn't have any sound because, <laughs> like, I don't really. Yeah. yeah. This is, Dylan. This is so much better than when it was just me. <laughs> I don't think you know. <laughs> you can actually watch the vod back. It looks what like. Are, what are they seeing this on right now? And YouTube. Oh, look at that pass. Beautiful pass. And he offloads it and... Onto oof. the ground, but it is all right, quickly recovered right. He's still got it. He's still got it. Is that, is that Kakai? All right, and Sc Scott takes the ball. Oh, my gosh, he's going. Scott takes the ball. Oh, he and he gets Eric away. Out. He oh, is he's getting sending away. it down the field. Oh. Alumni still in possession of the ball. Less than 10 yards away from scoring, from making a try, I think. Oh, that's really good video. You guys got it, like, right up close. There's a lot of rolling around on the ground. There's a lot of exchanging of the ball. Looks like the flag was standing where he wanted to stand. The flag people are waving around their yellow flags and throwing the ball to the ref. Are you guys gonna um, Are you guys gonna do this for like more 
like more games like in the future. We're gonna do this for as many games as we can, for as many sports as we can. Okay. What we're yeah. doing is much about running these cameras and what needs to be set up and when and where. Well, I mean, I know you guys are kind of just starting, but it already looks like better than like what Western has usually, because usually they kind of just have a view of like the whole field, and so you don't really yeah. see like what's up close, and so I like that it's kind of following the guys around. Yeah, our first step is making this repeatably good. Mm -hmm. Our next step is improving our camera angles and operation skills. We are also looking into doing custom graphic design for our uh, for our scoreboards, mm -hmm. so we have more than just the colors with the titles. I do like the the colors with the titles, though. It's kind of cool. In preparation for the softball nationals first round, I believe we have already started importing the branding information and logos and everything for the competing teams. So. That should be the first opportunity to see our, well, newly improved setup. You're talking like a graphic design thing like they have in sports where, you know, like it shows like the owl or something when they score and then it just adds the points up. Yeah, and That's we will cool. have like, an I think the scoreboards yeah. are animated. Mm -hmm. We're using scoreboards courtesy of Uno Overlays. Nice. Using their presets, customizing them, turning them into the greatness that you see now and in the future. The alumni scored? When did that happen? Uh, just now. We missed it. We were yeah, we were spacing out. That's all, all right. right. It looks like the score is now Owls at 26 and Guests at 20 with nine minutes remaining in the period. we got to figure out some way to synchronize this clock with the clock on the scoreboard. They, they are relatively close because one is counting up and one is counting down. Oh. <laughs> one's counting up and one's counting down. That's uh, less than ideal. Hey, did you get it? <laughs> it did look like that fell on the nice. other side of the fence. And he got the uh, he got the extra two, so. So what's that called? Is it is it a field goal? Okay, so you know when you score a try, it's a little you know think of it kind of like football, right? You know when you score a touchdown, it's like six, and then you kick the extra point. Well, uh, in rugby, when you when you get into the try zone and you touch the ball down, uh, it's five, and then uh, if you make the extra kick, it's two. So if somebody was to drop the ball to the ground and take a uh, well, what you would call a field goal, like right in the middle of the game, which is legal, as long as it touches the ball down first, that would be three. Or sometimes um, the sir may award a penalty, um, and so. The and sir? Somebody, yeah, the sir. So the one ref out there, basically. The ref is the sir, and then the flag people are line men. Yes, pretty much, yeah. So. We're just doing a quick little bit, because we're doing a behind-the-scenes video. Oh, nice, okay. Dylan and I are here commentating for the rugby game, and it's, it's been setting up other camera angles because the ones that we've got are not working. Here we yeah. go. All right. They get the tackle. The there we go. Get in there. and Oh, my gosh. There goes Eric, and he is in. That's That's good. I like that. It's like Eric just scored another try. Are they going to go for the two extra points here? Or did I miss something? Well, I think Eric is going to go for the two extra points there. So where they kick is based off of where is based off of where they score, touch the ball down. So a lot of times you'll see people try to run to the middle if they can and to to touch the ball down so they can kick it, you know, have like a nice easy extra points. Eh, it just depends, yeah. I mean, it really, anybody can do it. It just has to be from the same line. You know, somebody that's, like, good, I would imagine. So not me. <laughs> oh. no, I could probably kick it. I don't know. You could do anything you set your mind to. I could to. try, you know. Yeah, I'm, I think it looks good. It is a little out of focus. 
Let me get up and turn peeking on real quick and get this dialed in here. All right, and here comes the kickoff. It looks like Eric picks the ball up. And he's going to try some trickery here. And it looks like, who is that on the outside? Can't see very well. Okay, it's a good attempt. Got pushed out. So now it's going to be a line out. White's ball. All right, and White gets it back. And it's turned into now have the commentator cam set up uh, there's nothing and I mean nothing interesting going on in the field you might see us but otherwise we're keeping the camera on the action just for you what are they doing is this a scrum yeah So it's white scrum. Scotty inserts the ball. Comes around. Here we go. And he's going to take it. There we go. Oh, it's a sneak. Oh, and Scotty gets it. And he gets tackled. Taken down by. That was a good, that was a good move. They got, a lot of, they got a lot of ground, though. That's a. Are the alumni rucking towards the goal they're trying to score in? Is that legal? What do you mean? Trying to go that way and score. I thought they were supposed to only ruck towards their own side. No, I mean, they ruck to basically defend possession because the person has to insert the ball back. And so. so it's not like passing where it can't advance. No, the ball passing is pass the ball backwards. You know, when somebody gets tackled, they set the ball back. So they have about like a second to like set the ball back and to set it down. That's why you have people ruck over to defend possession. You did not hear it. The alumni just scored. The oh score nice. is now 31 Owls, 27 alumni. Yeah, this uh, – if Oregon Tech keeps playing hard, I think this might be the first time that they beat the alumni since I've been here. Well, last year the alumni had like 30 alumni show up, and they're all huge, so – yeah, we were hoping that a lot of alumni would show up this time so that we could steal some of them for commentary. <laughs> that didn't happen. And now, here we are. So, white to receive the ball. And blue is getting ready for the kickoff. We have Nicholas, our number 10, but I'm pretty sure he's wearing a different number. He was playing for the fly half. And here comes the kick. Oh, and he... Typically, yes, so um, 
the question was, do one numbers th- correspond with positions? Yeah, 1 through 15 will normally correspond with uh, positions. Um, but numbers change when they put, like, subs in and stuff, so. Or the team might decide to just move people around. So there's no rule that the numbers have to correspond with position. It just shakes out to be that well, way. When Getman gets the ball. Rock him. There we go, there we go. And Scotty. Oh, there goes Ryan. Somebody get with him. Ryan taken down by two people. There we go. Keegan picks it way up. Way to pick it up. Oh, go. As he's. Oh, he almost had it. That's so good. Looks like the period has officially ended, but they're still going for the try. Looks like the sir harshed everybody's vibe there by telling them that the game was over and that battle at the end, in fact, did not matter. Dylan, is that a wrap? It looks like that is everything we have today. That was the alumni game. Uh, Oregon Tech ended up winning 31 to 27. I guess it's all Oregon Tech because we were playing Oregon Tech current students and Oregon Tech alumni. Everybody's packing it in. I want to say thank you for joining us for our very first sports broadcast. Tune in on Monday at what time for the softball match? I believe our first match is 4 p.m. on Monday. And that's going to be on OregonTechOwls.com, not on our YouTube. I That one may be paid, but you'll have to check in then. Yeah. we. I'll say we'll get back to you. The likely, <laughs> likely outcome is that I completely forget about it. And then we are radio silent until our next broadcast. Uh, thanks for joining us. Have a, have a good rest of your day. We can wrap up by watching them take their team picture.